This D News episode is brought to you by Domain.com. We take pictures of our pets, our families, our food, everything else ever, but a new study says taking pictures might be hurting our memories of all of that. Hmm. Hey everybody, Trace here for D News, and we've got a very special guest, Jason Silva from Brain Games and Shots of Awe. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks Thank for you for having in. me. Thank you. Uh, recently, in your Shots of Awe episode, you're going to yeah. talk about the Instagram generation. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that means? Yeah, absolutely. You know, now all of us carry around a smartphone, and sort of ever-present nature of these photo filtering apps have made for a generation that's constantly documenting their lives. And some people criticize this because they're saying that we're not living in the moment. So there is a study that's yeah. going around as well yeah. in the Journal of Psychology that yeah. reminded me of this, yeah. uh, of what your episode is about. And uh, it says basically students who took photographs uh -huh. in a museum, which uh -huh. is a little more banal than Instagram, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it talks about how they looked at these objects and they couldn't remember them as well if they were taking photos of them yeah. versus if they were just asked to observe those those objects. That's a very interesting thing. So in other words, they found that taking photographs hampers our actual memory of something right. because unless okay. you were asked to actually zoom in on the photo or try and get a unique angle on the photo. I mean, I think that when people use apps like Instagram, they're punctuating the moment. Mm. You know, the the picking the filter, picking the shot really gives you a chance to have a say in what you're going to remember because when you're, later at night when you're in bed reflecting upon your day skimming through your Instagram feed that's a, a beautiful thing that's really all you get to keep memory has never been perfect you know sure there's been all these studies that show that we actually don't remember actual facts all that well yeah we're really bad at it yeah all it, memory is more a story an interpretation mm -hmm. and if we're using these tools now as sort of scaffoldings that extend our authorship over that interpretation the existential angst of the human condition is that oh my god everything passes yeah but if at the very least now we, we get to create these maps these you know, mental cartography or authored memories right and we get to be the directors of those memories of those maps that's that's empowering and as the internet takes over more and more of our lives and is the internet making us dumber or smarter kind of conversation yeah. which yeah. is I think related to this totally. because we're offloading things like phone numbers we're offloading things like regular just general yeah. information maybe we'll go online we'll just yeah. search for that and maybe photography is a similar way to kind of offload a memory that may have been lost initially 100% uh, but now you've been able to capture yeah, it. I'm glad you brought that up. There's a great book by Stephen Johnson that I recommend for people. It's called Everything Bad is Good for You. Mm -hmm. And he sort of maps a lot of technological innovations throughout history that were at once rejected by the authority at the time. And then we assimilate them. And now we kind of laugh at the fact that people were against that sure. stuff. Our minds are already distributed throughout the world. And the fact that we're continuing to do that with the internet by extending ourselves and do downloading ourselves, so to speak, right. is not a bad thing. It's just us putting mind into the world. World, you know, right. the, the, the world of technology, the world of objects. That's that's we're turning the mind inside out. This yeah, is what I would say. Brings me to another thing that they've talked about, and we've talked about here on D News as well. Whether or not you can remember memories, or you're remembering a photo of that memory, which I don't know personally if that to me matters at all. Yeah. Because like, say I see a picture of myself as a kid, I might not remember that. Right. But once my mom tells me the story of yeah. how that picture was taken, yeah. doesn't that the Either story's help all that matters. Prompt the memory to come back if it's there, or yeah. help me create that memory that didn't uh, exist before. A hundred percent. Look, I mean, as far as our personal narratives go, the memory is never going to be perfect, as in like empirically, non-subjectively perfect, right? Like it, it's always through the prism or through the filter of our of our narrative, of the story, of our mental maps, of our prejudices, of our cultural operating system, all these things are going to contextualize and create the stage in which we remember something anyway. At the end of the day, pure facts can be boring when it comes to like, you know, our memories. I mean, if yeah. you're interested in facts, go grab the phone book. You know, it's yeah, full yeah. of facts, but it's very boring. And Werner Herzog used to say that what he's interested in is ecstatic truth, subjective truth, you know, the truth as experienced within our interior 
priority, you know? And so uh, it doesn't matter if the memory is perfect. The memory that we choose to remember is, is ultimately all what matters. And there has been studies that have shown that every time you access a memory, the neural pathways are actually being rewritten every <laughs> access point. It's, it's a kind of mental time travel, you yeah. know? The present is changing the past. Right. In, in the dimension of memory, in the dimension, the dream space narrative of Jason and how Jason remembers things and how right. you remember things, experiences that you're having now and experiences that you have tomorrow change the memory right. of things that happened in the past. Absolutely. You know? and, so, and so having these maps, if anything, is anchoring your memory in how you were feeling at the time. To bring it back to like when you were saying it's a combination of our brains yeah. and our tools and yeah. our experience, yeah. if you think about it that way, Instagram is a tool that we're using yeah. now. We used to use film cameras. Of so film cameras were just a way of capturing and people who knew how to use them yeah. would use black and white film or color film. They'd use this lens or that lens. It wasn't that much different. It was just Same a little thing, more man. of a barrier to entry. People to write diaries, them you know? Right people way. write diary entries. You don't think that's subjective? You don't think people are like deciding and their memory when they write in a journal is being mediated through their language, through their right. culture, you know, through the, the vocabulary that they're equipped with, you know, through their religion. Yeah. All these things are mediating and affecting and shaping what people used to write in their journal. Oh, absolutely. So it's no different. Yeah, go, you know? go read a live journal from your own childhood and you'll be like, what? Yes, I can't believe exactly, I bought exactly. all of these things and used orange with red text. Dude, what was I yeah. thinking? We're a lot more than naked monkeys. You know, we are symbolic, we're symbolic beings and we live in a world of language and of image and of symbol. So what do you guys think of all this? Are you worried about photography? Are you part of the Instagram generation? Do you miss the days of 24 photos in a film canister? Or are you happy with like the nearly unlimited photos we have now? Get down into the comments, wax poetic, get funky with it. Thanks for watching D News and check out Shots of Awe on the Test Tube Network and please subscribe.